There are some preliminary steps to get to the point where you can enter the lineups. For a real match, insert a memory stick and define it as your backup. Then establish the rules on the Rules tab. As you can see, I've opened the National Federation rule set. Enter header information for the score sheet on the Match tab. And lastly, either open or enter two rosters on the Rosters tab. Then when you go to the Set tab, a yellow Start button appears. When you click on the Start button, VolleyWrite requires you to indicate which team serves first. If you know which sides of the court the teams will occupy and it doesn't match the display, use the Change Courts button right away. Although you can use the Change Courts button at any point, fixing this as soon as possible may prevent you from entering the lineups incorrectly or selecting the wrong team with first serve. When you select a radio button, lineup diagrams appear. These are NFHS lineup diagrams. But depending on your selections on the Rules tab, you could see diagrams for USA Volleyball or NCAA Women. All the way up until you accept the lineups, you can change the team with first serve using the radio buttons at the top of the screen. Just a word of warning, if the lineup diagram submitted by a coach doesn't match the lineup diagram on the screen, please get your R2 to help you. The Roman numerals have different meanings for different associations. There are different ways to fill the lineup diagrams. Use whichever methods work best for you. You can use a clicking or drag and drop action between the diagrams and the benches. You can fill the positions in any order and you can move players starting with the bench and ending on the lineup diagram or vice versa. To drag and drop, position the cursor arrow over a number on the bench, press on the left side of the mouse, drag the cursor arrow to the position on the diagram, and release the mouse to drop the number. Or you can click on a position on the lineup diagram and then click on a number on the bench. Incidentally, this is also how you enter substitutions and Libro replacements when your set is in progress. Although it's hard to capture this in a video, you can double click players on the bench to move them in order into the next open position. To make the Windows version like the iPad version, we added the Auto button. Click the Auto button and then click on the numbers on the bench as the spotter calls them out in order. If you make a mistake, just click the Auto button again or the blue area outside the diagram to get out of Auto mode. After the first set, you have the option of using the Last Lineup button. This button lets you select a team or teams, and VolleyWrite will populate the diagram with that team's starting lineup from the previous set. VolleyWrite defaults to loading the teams which don't already have players entered into the lineup diagram. Just be aware that the last lineup button writes over any numbers you've already entered in the lineup diagram. When a lineup includes a number which is not shown on the bench, you can use the Add Player or Change Jersey buttons to correct any mistakes you made when you entered the roster. Otherwise, you should check with your R2 in case a penalty would apply. Once a player has been moved into a lineup diagram, you can use the Rotate buttons to move the players while maintaining their relative positions. It's common for coaches to keep the same starting players from the previous set in the same serving order, but change which player serves first. This is how the rotate buttons affect a floor order diagram. Once a player is entered on a lineup diagram, when your rules include captain tracking, a captain box appears and you must select a captain for each team before you can accept the lineups. When a non-Libro player is the captain, you don't have to enter an alternate captain, so the alternate title is white and, by default, an X fills the box. However, VolleyWrite gives you the option to indicate an alternate. When a Libero is the captain, you must enter an alternate, so VolleyWrite shows the alternate title in yellow. 
The drop-down box then contains only the players already in the lineup diagram. Captains are indicated in the lineup diagrams and on the court layout with an underline. Before accepting the lineups, when you move a player between one of the six service positions and an occupied Libero box, Volleyright confirms that you want to change which player was designated as the Libero. Once the six service positions are as full as the bench can provide and the captains have been indicated, the Accept button appears. When you click the Accept button, the lineup diagrams disappear and Volleyright shows the court layout. Volleyright indicates the current server with a green background. When the players enter the court to start each set, you should also check the court when the R2 is checking player positions. If you see a difference between the players on your screen and the players' locations on the floor, be sure to alert the R2. This needs to be resolved right away before the set begins. Once the team's starting players' positions are confirmed, the R2 will allow each Libro to enter the court. To enter a Libro replacement into VolleyRight, click on the Libro and the replaced player in any order. The replacement is then recorded on the Libero tracking sheet. If you find a mistake in a team's lineup during a set, get the R2 to stop play so you can use the Manual Fix button. Inside the Manual Fix dialog, the Fix Lineup button shows a diagram similar to the one you accepted at the beginning of the set so you can make the change. You owe it to yourself and to your team to try VolleyRight. Download the free one-week trial for Windows at www.volleyright.com and you be the judge. We look forward to your questions and comments sent to info at volleyright.com.